A few years ago, I went on a trip to California to visit friends. I lived a few states away and was going to fly in, but I needed a place to stay while I was there. First, I looked at hotels, and they were difficult to find, so I decided to check out Airbnbs as well. Those were also hard to find. After a long time of searching, I finally found an Airbnb that seemed to be a really good deal. It was certainly cheaper than any hotels and seemed like it would work just fine for me. But from the start, the owner of the room seemed a little bit sketchy. The way the ad was written was a little bit odd. There were some spelling errors and the pictures were sort of weird. The place also didn't have any reviews yet. So when I first saw it, I kept looking but after not finding anything with nearly as cheap of a price, I considered it again. It was a very small house, and I would have the whole place to myself. The value just seemed way better than any other place that I had looked at. Everybody was most likely scared off by the less than ideal photos and description. After all, most of the listings you see on Airbnb look to be professionally photographed and well written. Plus, there was no reviews yet so I decided to just go for it. Having a whole place to myself would be really nice, as opposed to just having a small room or staying in somebody's basement. I reserved the place and was slightly nervous for it, but more excited to go to California and visit my friends. When the time came, after my flight, I took a lift to the location. It was towards the end of a quieter street and seemed to have a decent-sized yard. I had instructions on where the key was which was hidden in the backyard. After I got it, I went inside the house. It was pretty much just how it looked online and I was feeling good about it. The place was very small, but good enough for me and I was proud of myself for getting such a great deal. It was one level and didn't have an upstairs or basement. There was just a kitchen, a living room, one bedroom and a bathroom. I was in the house for a little bit and then left to meet up with my friends. I hung out with them for basically the rest of the night. Later that evening, I returned to my small Airbnb at probably about 10 p.m. When I got inside, I started to get ready for bed. I was really tired, and within maybe 10 minutes, I was about to get into the bed. I turned out all of the lights in the small house and was making my way over to the bedroom. That's when I saw what looked like somebody walking past the window in the backyard. It really took me by surprise, and I stopped walking and looked but by that time, the person was now out of my view. In the backyard, it was very dark. The only reason that I had seen the person at all was because I had turned all the lights inside off. I didn't get a good look at them, but it seemed to be a man. I walked over to the window and looked out, but by now, saw nobody. After that, I went over a couple of other windows and looked out, but also saw nothing. I decided to try to go to bed now, although I wasn't quite as tired anymore. When I got into the bedroom though, I saw the man again. Once more, I didn't get a good look at him at all. He briefly moved past the window, which wasn't very big. Now I knew somebody was prowling around out there and I was really concerned. I went back into the living room and looked out of that window. When I didn't see anything, I went all around to the other windows. There were no shades or blinds for the windows at all, which was too bad. I wanted to cover them. The windows were not very big, but I just didn't want whoever was walking around to be able to get in or see inside. I made sure the door was locked and then stayed up for a little while. When I didn't see anything for like 30 minutes, I finally got tired again and went back to the bedroom. I got in bed and tried to just ignore the bad feeling that I had. I really wanted to get some sleep. Whoever was out there didn't try to get in or anything, so I was telling myself that I would be okay. I laid in bed for no more than five minutes before I started to feel very paranoid. I opened my eyes and looked up. When I did, I saw there was a man staring right in the window. This time, I got a good look at his face. When he saw me, he ducked straight down after like a second. He looked really familiar to me though. For a few seconds, I didn't know where I'd seen him. Then I remembered. I ran into the small hallway, which was the only area with no windows. I went on my phone and onto the Airbnb app. That's when I realized that the man in the window was the owner of the Airbnb. He had been staring into the window watching me try to sleep. I wanted to get out of there. 
I knew that he likely had keys. After all, he owned the place. I packed up all of my things right then and there and left. When I left the house, I ran for my car, but didn't see or hear the guy. Then I drove to a random parking lot and tried to find a hotel for the night. I had to drive a ways away and also pay more than I wanted to, but I got lucky and was able to find a hotel room. I also reported the man to Airbnb. When I sent him a message about it, he completely denied everything. After that, I never used Airbnb again. I used to rent out my basement for Airbnb. I own a two-story house that has a decent-sized finished basement. A few years back, I had the idea to rent out the basement to make some extra money. The house is way more space than I needed at the time, and it was a bit of an investment. I thought that the basement would be a good place to rent because it was separated from the rest of the house. So I did some work and made it pretty nice down there by getting some new carpet and furniture. Down in the basement, there's a bedroom, a bathroom, and then basically like a large living room. I also added a small kitchen in the corner, which has a sink, stove, and refrigerator, as well as a counter. When everything was completed, I took some pictures and listed it on Airbnb. Because I live only about five minutes away from a major city, I knew that people would be wanting to stay in the area. And sure enough, I started to get guests. When people would stay there, I wouldn't even really notice them because I set up a smart lock on the door leading to the basement. They would arrive after check-in time, and after checkout time, I would go down and clean it. I would also restock some of the things I left for guests, like water bottles in the fridge. My basement had really good reviews, and I was happy about it. Most of the people who stayed there were really nice as well. I didn't meet many of them in person at all, but the few that I did were great. So one time, I had a guy rent my basement for a night. Everything started out normal, and it was just like any other person. The next day, after the checkout time passed, I went down to clean like I always did. Normally, cleaning wouldn't take too long. The place had never been left in a really bad shape before. Most people, it's just about as clean as it was before they checked in. Still, I would do stuff like disinfect the countertops and vacuum the carpet. I would usually go down like an hour or two after they checked out, depending on if I had guests coming for the next night. This time, I didn't have anybody staying there the next night, so I went down a little bit later. It was actually nighttime, probably at about 8 p.m. I started cleaning the countertops and stuff. Everything was still clean, and nothing was messed up or out of place that I noticed. Next, I started vacuuming the carpet. All the floors down there were carpet except for a little bit in the kitchen and the bathroom. I started in the living room and soon went into the bedroom. As I was vacuuming in there, I got to underneath the bed. The vacuum seemed to hit something that was underneath the bed, but I didn't know what it was. I stopped and started to look underneath it. That's when I saw a man crawling out from underneath the bed. It was the same guy who had been renting the room. I jumped back and asked him what he was doing here. The guy simply ran right past me and then up the stairs and out the door. I went over and made sure that he left. Then I tried to go on Airbnb and contact the guy, but never got a response. I really don't know what the guy was doing hiding under my bed. It was really weird though, and I will never forget it. Last year, I got an Airbnb in the woods. It was a cabin, and I was considering getting a cabin myself. I went for a weekend trip and rented the place for two nights. It was very far north from where I lived, but I knew the area pretty well. There were some lakes very close by, and it was mainly just cabins and wildlife in the general area. The cabins in the area were very far apart from each other. It was very secluded and a great place to get away from everything. The cabin that I stayed in did have electricity and running water and was a decent size for a cabin. There was a living room, kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. If I ended up owning a cabin, I would have wanted it to be very similar. 
the very first night, I was cooking something in the kitchen and heard a noise from the other room. There was somebody seemingly knocking on the back door. It was pretty strange to say the least. I stopped what I was doing and walked over to check it out. When I got there though, nobody was there. I was sure that I had heard somebody knocking, but I started to question myself. Perhaps I hadn't heard somebody knocking. It wasn't really that loud and there had been some noise from me cooking. Maybe something else behind the cabin made some noise. The land around there was mostly just woods. There were really no reason for anybody else to be over here anyways. It could have possibly been an animal. I figured it was nothing and went back to cooking. And everything went well for the next hour or so. But that's when I heard it again. By now, I was in the living room, so all I had to do was look over. The back door where I was coming from was only like 15 feet away from me. But when I looked, I couldn't really see anything because of how dark it was outside. I got up and then walked over to the door. That's when I was sure that for a second, I saw somebody running away. I couldn't tell who they were or anything. I couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman, just that somebody was running off. I opened up the door slightly and heard whoever it was now running through the woods, but I couldn't see them at all. The trees and leaves rustled as the person got deeper in. Somebody was messing with me or something. I had no clue who would do this or why though. This was an Airbnb in basically the middle of the woods, far away from anyone else. I was pretty creeped out now. I made sure that the doors were locked and stuff. After a while of nothing happening that night though, I went to bed. I got to sleep just fine, but woke up sometime in the night. What woke me up was the sound of somebody screaming. They weren't saying anything, but just screaming. It sounded like once again they were behind the cabin. It was extremely loud and I got up to walk closer to it. When I got to the back door, it sounded like the person was less than 10 feet away. I carefully looked outside. When I was looking out the window, at first I saw nothing at all. The noise was coming from to the right, but I couldn't see them from where I was. As I was looking out still, just a few seconds later, the person suddenly came right into my sight. They walked right up to the back door. It was an insane looking man. His eyes were really wide as he came right up to the door and then knocked on it. <laughs> then he kept screaming. I jumped back and got my phone and called for the police. Then I went into the bedroom and tried to ignore it. The police would take a while to get there because of where we were. The man stopped and seemed to go back into the woods about 10 minutes later. And then the police got there about another 10 minutes after that. By then, the man was gone and I could just tell the police what had happened. They looked around a little bit, but I'm not sure where the guy went. I ended up leaving the next morning, but luckily the guy didn't come back in the time that I was there. <laughs>